Today's lesson is introduction to function. This topic is a foundation of the functions and graph topic. At the end of this video, you should be able to define what a function is, the types of function, how to test if a graph is a function, and if it's a function, what type of a function is it, and also do some examples to test if we understand the concept. Before we start to define what a function is, I will define relations. So, a relation is anything that takes input and gives out outputs. I mean, anything. It could be a tool, a machine, a rule, or an equation. As long as it takes in inputs and gives out outputs. And in our case, it takes in x values and gives you y values. So, once we know this term, so we... We have inputs which we say are x and are independent values. And we have outputs which are y values in this case. And we say that is a dependent value. So take this analogy and we, we're going to use this analogy to define what a function is. So we go to functions. Again, a function is a relation as well. So a function is any mathematical tool if we are talking in mathematical terms or an equation or a relationship, like I said, that takes in input values and gives exactly one output value. So we can see we are extending the definition of a relation. So a function is a special type of a relation because now you no longer just taking input and getting out an output. Whatever input you take, you have to have only one output. And that's what differentiates a function from a relation. So as you can tell that all the functions are relations. But not all relations are functions. Because you can get a relation that doesn't give only one output. So we say functions, functions are relations. But not all, okay, let me say, not all relations are functions, right? So we still use the same term. We have x values and then we have y values. So the x values that we put into the function, we can call them a set. And that set... The, the, the set of x values, we can say it's a domain. It's known as a domain. So a domain is a set of x values. And then the y output set is known as a range. So do not forget these terms. We have new terms now. We have a domain. We have a range. We're going to use these terms as we go throughout. So now we know what a function is. It's a mathematical tool that takes x values and gives exactly or produces exactly one output. For each and every x value you, you give it, you have to have one output. So now that you know what a function is, we have y equal to x. So that's a mathematical equation so we want to know if that equation is a function so we say we want to evaluate here we have x equal to one so wherever we see x we want to put one and then it says y is equal to x so two goes with two three goes with three four goes with four five goes with five we know this because of this equation so we want to know if that equation is a function or not so and we we know how to to check that we only have to have one output for every input value so this is our input set we can see that each input every input has a unique output so we can say this 
is a function. So we know this is a function. So y equal to x is a function. So how can we mathematically represent that this equation is a function? So we have a notation f of x equal to x. So we use this notation to, to, to symbolize that an equation is a function. You can see that this is f of x. It doesn't mean f times x. It means f is a function of x, meaning f takes in x input values. So this is a notation that you will normally see when you represent your functions. So this is how you represent. It is not limited only on f. You can have h of x. You can have g of x. It doesn't matter. Or you can have h of a, meaning that the function h takes in a input values. So that's the notation we're going to use to represent a function. We go to the second set of example. So we have this x as our input. So we take 1, we put into that equation 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25. So we do the same here. You can see that, okay, x maps to 1, 2 maps to 4, 3 to 9, 4 to 16, 5 to 25. And you can still see here that every input maps to one output value. We can extend here. I want you to see something. So I'm going to extend and go to negative values. So you would have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. We'll just stop there. So you can see that negative 1 squared is 1, negative 2, negative 2 is 4, negative 3 is 9. So I shouldn't have written here, we can say here, negative 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 4, 3 goes to 9. So you can see for every x value, you have one output. This also is a function. So this is also a function. Then we come to this set, which is y squared is equal to x. To solve for y here, because y is our output, not y squared. So we can solve for y to say y is equal to square root of x. And remember, this is going to give you plus minus. So from here already, from solving that equation already, you can see that for any any x value that you're going to put here, it's not going to give you one output value. It's, it's going to give you plus minus so if we put here 4 square root of 4 is gonna give you plus minus 2 right okay let me say plus and then minus 2 so you see already you have one x value that gives you two output values so this already you do not have to continue this is not a function so now we know how to tell if a set is a function or not. From these two functions, you can already see that these are different types of functions. You see, one to one, one to one. And here we, we had two different x values getting into one output value. So going to types of function, we can tell that this is a one to one function. one-to-one -one function here because many input values gives you one output value it's a many to one so we have two types of functions we have one-to-one -one function and we also have many to one function but note here you have one output and that is a function so now we have to be able to know if a graph is a function or not. So this is just numbers and stuff. You will be given in, in your, at your stage, you would work with graphs. So how do we tell that a graph is a function or not? And what type of a function is it? 
So we'll still use the same examples we used. We had y is equal to x. And you know, we saw here that 1 was 1, 1 made to 1, and 1 made 2 made to 2. So this is just a straight line of y is equal to x. So this is y, this is x. And then y was equal to y was equal to x squared. We know this is a parabola. Okay, this is b. And here is just an in is, we transform that by the line y equal to x to make things simple. So we just transform that because it was like this to be that. And this is a circle centered at zero. So the concern is not how to draw. This is just for representation to test if a graph is a function or not. So we, we go to the first example, which was y equal to x. So now how do we test graphically if a graph is a function? So we use a test called vertical line test. So that means you take a straight line parallel to the y-axis and move it along your domain. And if it only touches once for every x value, that is a function. So I will take this ruler, I will use it as my, para, my vertical line test, and you can see I would move at every point, I'm only touching once. So to make it simple and visual, so you can see that I only touch once. So that is a function. We go to the second example, we do the same thing. I won't move my ruler this time. You can see we only touch once. So you just have to move it across the domain. There was no need for me to write these straight lines because my domain starts here and ends the other side. So this is also a function. We, we, we go to the third example. We start here because our graph starts here. K touches once, we move to the second one. You can see that for that x value, we have two outputs. There is no need to move it across because we can see that already this fails the vertical line test. Therefore, this example is not a function. We go to the last example, we do the same thing. We start here, okay, we touch once there, we move to the second point. Already we can see that this is not a function so it is it is easy like that you just move your vertical line across your domain and if it touches your graph once for every x value then it is a function so now that we know these two examples are function how do we then tell what type of a function it is is it a one-to-one -one? is it a many-to-one so we use another line test which is called horizontal line test Note this, for a horizon, horizontal line test, you can only use it to test the type of a function. At this point, you should already know that a graph is a function for you to use a horizontal line test. So the same thing applies, the horizontal line, line test, you move it across your range, and if it touches only once, then it's a one-to-one. -one. But if it touches twice, then it's a twice or more, it's a many to one. So we do the same thing. Let's use a different color. We do the same thing. There is my horizontal line test. I move it across. And you can see the black line is only touching once. So this one is a one to one. We go to the second example. We do the same thing. So from the start, we can see that, oh, I'm already touching my graph twice on the y-axis. So that already fails the one-to-one, -one, but passes the many-to-one. I almost said it fails um, to be a function. But yeah, so if it doesn't pass this one, it passes the many-to-one function. So this is a one-to-one, -one, that's a many-to-one.
Can we use the horizontal test here? No, because this already is not a function. So there is no need to test what type of a function it is if we already know that it is not a function. Thank you for watching. If you got something from this video, go subscribe and like. And I will see you on the next video when we simplify more maths questions.